talking about the things that matter most to you. Catholic Women Now. Welcome to Catholic Women Now here on Iowa Catholic Radio. I'm Julie Nelson, and today I'm joined by Leslie Teeling, who is filling in for Chris this, this uh, today. So, Leslie. Happy to be here. Oh, it's I love being so, on the show. Thank I, you for asking me. I love having you here with me, too, as well. Uh, it's so funny because last month I was gone and you helped Chris, and yes. uh, you're going to be a regular here. Yeah, I'll just whenever you guys are gone, I'll just fill in. Yeah, every, every, yeah. every time. Oh, that's you know what? Thank you. We do appreciate that a lot. <laughs> oh, it's it my means pleasure. a lot. So anyway, well, let's uh, start. Let's start with prayer, and then we'll get into a little bit more about our show today. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So one thing we do on our show regularly, we've been doing, is a Truth, Beauty, and Goodness segment. So, Leslie, what is your Truth, Beauty, and Goodness today? Well, I was actually thinking about that this morning, and I guess adoration. And the reason I bring up adoration, it's Truth, Beauty, and Goodness all in one. But uh, we have the Adoration Chapel at St. Francis now, and it's very, very small, but I've really been struck, and I was last week when I was there, because there were probably 10 of us in there, and the just the people that, from all walks of life, and at the end, when a gentleman was leaving, he got up and knelt right in front of that Blessed Sacrament, and it's just so moving to see people so enamored with our Lord in adoration. The reverence and the intimacy. Yes, and, and, and from all walks of life, for, so that was that was beautiful for me. I, I do like those adoration chapels that are small because it, it is intimate. You, you're right there with Jesus. And, yes. Yes. But I have noticed that there's more adoration happening in our diocese. I mean, oh, yeah. it's wonderful to see how churches are adding it to their schedules and opening it's up the church. Seeing how important that it is yes, to have it that is. at your church. It is. You know, when we started adoration at Sacred Heart, things started changing. Just get Jesus out to the people, and He changes hearts. Well, that's what the Lord tells us. Yes, and it, it needs, He keeps His promises, right? That's right. Well, my truth, beauty, and goodness is kind of is a little bit about our show topic today. Um, as many as you know, the Mother Cabrini movie is coming out this week. I know. I have my tickets. I have my tickets too. I can't wait to see it. I've been reading some reviews that are, have been very positive. But I was just reflecting on that how beautiful it is that we have the arts to. It, uh, to portray the beauty of our Catholic faith on a cinematic, ta- cinematic screen yes. in movie theaters. It's, it used to be you bought the DVD and you got a few people together. It wasn't this widespread. So I'm, I'm grateful and thankful, and I think that is, is, is a goodness that's happening right now. And, and very much needed. And very much needed, very right, much needed. right. So anyway, our guest today... Oh, before we get to our guest, we've got a, a big week coming up here at we Iowa Catholic Radio. A couple Radio. weeks, yeah. Uh, our, our fundraiser. Um, annual spring fundraiser. We have one in the fall and one in the spring, and it's the week of the 19th, right? 19th through the t- 19th through the 22nd. Four days this year, not five. But yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a great week for the station. Everybody comes together and um, works really hard on this, and we just we need our donor support. That's that's how we right. stay on the air. Well, yes, we're donor supported completely. Yes. Well, I and they are our, so generous. They are generous, and and we were asked we just ask if you would just pray and consider may, being a thousand dollar match for our, our our fundraiser week. Yes, and consider that because uh, it doubles our efforts in helping us raise even more money to support our cause, and we've expanded into new markets mm-hmm. um, around the state. So, um, it, Leslie, you and I both have gone out in the public and hear people come up to us and say, oh, I heard this in Iowa Catholic Radio and so I didn't many know them. Yes, yes, over and over and over again. So now I would just ask all of you to prayerfully consider being a $1,000 matching donor this year. And, and your generosity will then spur other people to be right. generous as well. You can be the leader in that. So mm-hmm. you just have to go to iowacatholicradio.com um, to donate. It's very easy. And any gift over $1,000 uh, will be considered a matching gift. And then they'll use that during... The week of the fundraiser. Yep. So yes. you can be anonymous or, or, you know, you can also have your name over the air, too, as well. So. Yeah. Every year we meet new people doing this. Yeah. You know, the pick up the pick up and help out. Yes. So, OK. Well, our guest today um, is building on the Mother Cabrini theme here today. And I uh, on Catholic Women now is Kristen Ter- Terrell. She um, is from Sophia Institute Press. Uh, she serves as an author and spokesperson for Sophia Institute Press. She received her MA in history from the College of William and Mary and her BA in history and Russian from 
St. Anselm College. She studies the persecution of Catholics under communist regimes, and she's been featured on a wide range of media platforms, including Coast to Coast AM, The Federalist, and The Catholic Faith Network. Kristen has written a book called um, The Mother Cabrini Companion, A Spiritual Journey with a Courageous Woman of God, which we'll visit with her about, and also a little bit about the, a, a biography of Mother Cabrini that was written by um, uh, Mr. Maynard, and she can tell us a little more. So, Kristen, welcome to Catholic Women Now. Good morning, ladies. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, well, it's a pleasure to have you on with us. Um, Kristen, can you just give us a little overview of Mother Cabrini and her life? Because I think a lot of people may have heard her name, but they don't know much about her. Sure. And I was definitely one of those people, too, before this project came to me. I think I used to get her confused with Elizabeth Ann Seaton, yeah, maybe yeah. with Mother Drexel, <laughs> and other American women saints who were involved in education and mission work. So her life is, is quite unique, obviously, um, and I was glad for the opportunity to, to get to know her more. Kristen, um, can I ask a quick, just a quick question? Did yeah. you write this companion uh, before the movie was ever, you know, being created or so this is something so we wrote this actually as as really a companion to the movie so it is so a companion to the movie we that was my question luckily, yeah. yes we were approached okay. by angel studios and it was the kind of the same day that i had started to see the marketing on instagram and i was like i really want to see this movie wow <laughs> who knew mother cabrini that would be on the big screen and then um providentially they approached sophia institute to do the distribution and and write put together these these books to help promote um a more deeper understanding of mother's life so so that's the action it after- came together in a month so uh, that's the action I- you can take after the movie reading the companion correct exactly yeah, yeah. i would yeah. read it <clears throat> definitely uh, after because of course there's only so much a movie can do and introducing someone to us and so this really delves deep into her own introspective meditation okay. i think this is wonderful i don't hear that very often of a companion being written for a movie i know there was some after the, mel gibson's the passion but mm-hmm. um i this is wonderful to continue on her legacy and her her um, her life for all of us to be an inspiration to all That's of us right. will this be yeah, mentioned at the at the movies like after the movie will people know about this um, I don't believe it's mentioned like within the credits of the movie or anything, okay. um, but we're doing our best <laughs> to get <laughs> to the word out and, and uh, social media and everything to okay. make sure people get it. <laughs> okay. Great. All right. Well, Kristen, we're going to have to take a little break here, but when we come back, we are going to talk a little bit more about Mother Cabrini and her life and then talk more about this companion to, to take with us after we see the movie. So you're listening to Catholic Women Now on Iowa Catholic Radio. We'll be back after this brief break. Confluence Brewing Company, a former home brewer's dream, is now a hub where great things come together. Situated south of Gray's Lake and easily accessible via the bike trail in Des Moines. Thank you, Confluence Brewing Company, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Hey, honey, did you get the takeout from the fish fry? Fish and chips. Oh, you got anything to go with the chips? Chips and dip. Oh, what's this other sauce for? Dip the fish. Iowa Catholic Radio knows that some of the best fish fries in the heartland happen right here in our listening area. Email contact at iowacatholicradio.com to add your fish fry to our fish fry finder. Check out the other fish fry happening across the listening area at iowacatholicradio.com. Thank you to our business sponsor, Chick-fil-A, serving freshly prepared food with quality ingredients every day of the week, except Sunday, of course. Now with a lunchtime stand located inside the Skywalk at 700 Locust Street in downtown Des Moines. Learn more at chickfilacom Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from the Des Moines Symphony, presenting Discover Gershwin. Award-winning pianist Michelle Kahn celebrates the 100th anniversary of Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue. The concert will open with Grammy-nominated composer Carlos Simon's gospel-inspired Amen. And Caesar Franck's symphony in D minor will bring the concert to a close Saturday night, March 9th, and Sunday afternoon, March 10th at the Des Moines Civic Center. Learn more at dmsymphony.org. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Deary of Ames, home of warranty forever, offering new, used, and commercial vehicles as well as service and Mopar parts. Deary of Ames is located just off of Highway 30 at the Dayton Avenue exit and online at dearyames.com. Welcome back to Catholic Women Now here on Iowa Catholic Radio, where our guest today is Kristen Terrio. She has written a book on um, Mother Cambrini. It's a companion book 
uh, meditations for um, after you see the movie. But she's also going to give us a little bit about Mother Cabrini's life and who she was. Um, I think it's a name many of us have heard, but do we know much about her? And so, Kristen, can you just give us a little bit of uh, background on a biography of her? Sure. So she was born in Italy in the Lombard region in 1815. She was actually the youngest of 13 children. So she came from quite a poor family of farmers, and she was very sickly throughout her life. So she had this dream to... <clears throat> you know, after attending schools run by the Daughters of the Sacred Heart to have a religious vocation herself. And she unfortunately was denied in her first attempt um, because of her health. So she continued on and eventually was able to take religious vows in 1877. She took on her middle name, Saviero in Italian, or Xavier, um, because her name, she was born Maria Francesca, and she had this devotion to Francis Xavier, who, of course, was a great missionary. And really, she had this missionary spirit from the beginning. So she founded her own order, which was the Missionary Sisters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus in 1880. And she really worked tenaciously from then on to be the first female order to have international missions of the scale in which she did. She famously visited the Pope, Leo XIII, in order to advocate for her order and to try to get approval for it. And this is depicted in the movie. And she actually had really a heart for the East, and she wanted to travel to China to establish missions there. But the Pope wisely told her, and this is kind of interesting, and she at first didn't understand, as, as it's portrayed in the movie, that instead of China, the Pope really wanted her to go to the United States instead. And he said famously, not to the East, but to the West. And this is because, yes, there was already a strong Christian presence in the U.S. and Catholic, although Catholics were treated differently in this country depending on the year. But the immigrant population, particularly the Italian immigrants in New York City, were really suffering not only in the human realm, but also um, needed spiritual attention. And so the Pope saw with her Italian background and her missionary spirit that this was the perfect fit for her. And so she, even though didn't understand obediently, went to the U.S. instead and quickly saw how much she was needed there. She established orphanages and schools and missions all throughout the country. Um, the movie focuses on her work in New York City, and then later she went to other places around the world, but uh, including Colorado in the U.S. That's where her and, shrine is. Yeah, there's a shrine there. Yes, I've so, been there. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. It was. I want to make a trip. Kristen, it's on the way to skiing for a lot of us. So we've. Uh, in fact, I'm <laughs> going skiing in a week and a half, and I'm thinking we need to stop there again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I was telling my husband. I said, "Well, you know, we've been. To, remember that shrine?" And he goes, "Yeah, I'm the one who suggested we stop and see it." <laughs> I kind of forgot that. It's pretty so. easy. Yes, yeah, right yeah. on the way up the yeah, mountain. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, go ahead. Yes, and then she she has another shrine in New York City too, which is actually just a few a short walk from the Met Cloisters. So oh, we're wow. going to oh. visit there in the near future. Why a shrine um, in Colorado though? Did, was she there or just she was there? She yeah, was there. She established okay. missions in Colorado. Okay. So in the letters that I read to the companion of hers, um, many of them are from that period, and she just writes of. Uh, because Colorado was at that point not extremely settled, so there wasn't a lot of infrastructure. There weren't regular visits from priests. So she talks about how the the Catholic spiritual life in Colorado had kind of gone by the wayside just because of the the remoteness of the location. So that part was really interesting. Mm. But she, she, she um, from what I read, she she was mighty. She was small and diminutive in stature, but man, she had such a perseverance and mighty way about her. Um, I, I read it's something where they were the nuns were building a converting a hotel into a hospital and the contractors were trying to swindle them out of something and she got in there she put her she fired him and she put her uh habit tucked her habit in and um, climbed up the scaffolding and uh, took, <laughs> took charge and directed the construction for several weeks <laughs> so yeah, that sounds that like mother angelica <laughs> yeah, mother angelica I know. yeah <laughs> very tenacious but yes. also had this like otherworldly just angelic piece about her where one of the really interesting parts of reading her letters was that she was often because she established missions on across continents she was traveling a lot so she was on steamships and the the passengers would treat her with such respect and deference even the passengers who were protestant or solid away from the church and just had she just had this this way about her that people people knew to respect her um despite <laughs> her small stature 
That's kind of the way it is with saints, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, she, but she's not declared a saint yet. She she is. She is. She is saint. She's, okay, yeah. I wasn't sure. Okay, I'm and sorry. she was the first American to be citizen to be canonized a saint. Um, and St. Elizabeth Seton was the first American born. But we don't call her St. Mother Cabrini, so that's a little confusing. I think for people who just don't know, you know? Yeah, it's probably something like she'll go down in history as Mother Cabrini or or like Mother Angelica or or, Mother Drexel and others. Yeah. Mother Teresa is another one who actually was inspired by Mother Cabrini and her work. Yeah. And you can definitely see that for sure. Well, let's, we've got a couple minutes here before we take a break, and I kind of want to get into a little bit about your companion to Mother Cabrini. Um, you mentioned you read a lot of her letters, so you really kind of understand her spirituality and her heart. Um, tell us what was the, uh, the uh, inspiration for you to write this uh, companion. So my role in this work was really as editor. So I wrote an introduction, but really the bulk of the writing is Mother Cabrini's own words, which I organized and edited into devotional format. So I drew these largely from her letters home to her sisters from her travels. And she wrote a lot in her life. And, for example, she famously wrote to the Pope and to cardinals. But her letters to her sisters are really very personal and introspective and encouraging and I think really universal in their applications because she is still living that role as spiritual mother to them, even remotely from across the globe. So she's writing advice that can be applied in all of our lives and uh, encouragement in, in, in each of our particular vocations. And so it's organized weekly. So this is something that you can bring to adoration at the beginning of the week and meditate on each of these slowly or read one per day throughout the week or uh, read it all on Sunday while you're reading before Mass, something like that, with room for journaling at the end of each chapter. And they are organized around specific themes that emerge from her work. So there's a different theme for each week, including um, towards the beginning, there's meditations on the beauty of God's creation, because in her travels, she just has these very beautiful meditations on the ocean. For example, she will often liken the state of the ocean to the state of someone's soul. So when there's a storm, she'll say to her sisters, this is what the inside of someone's soul in the state of sin looks like, which just gives us this really powerful visual. It and does. then when it's yeah, a it beautiful sea, she'll say, this is what the soul is like in the state of grace, and this is what you are seeking to attain, and this is what heaven will be like. So just a lot of very immediate imagery that helps us to kind of unite the church militant here on earth with the church triumphant in heaven. And she, yeah, just other things that we would expect, like humility and conversion, and especially the missionary zeal and the zeal for souls. So I found it really inspiring, and I, I like the way that I've organized it because we can really hone in on each of these particular themes, uh, whereas when you're reading her letters chronologically, uh, it can kind of, the you can somewhat get lost. Well, Kristen, uh, we're going to take a little break here and put a little pause on that, but when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more with Kristen Ter- Terrio about her companion guide that she wrote for the Mother Cambrini um, movie that's coming out this week. You're listening to Catholic Women Now on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for programming comes from St. Joseph's Knights of Columbus. Join Father Chris Fontanini for their fish fry, 4.30 to 7 p.m. every Friday through March 22nd. Baked or fried fish and sides are available for dine-in or carry-out. Kids menu available, 3300 Easton Boulevard in Des Moines. Support for programming is provided by construction professionals, serving customers through a proven process creating unique design, functionality, and artistic beauty. Construction Professionals is a Catholic family business built on a strong foundation. cpcustomhomes.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Skeffington's Formal Wear. In business since 1951, with locations in Des Moines, West Des Moines, Coralville, and Ankeny. Skeffington's Formal Wear, fitting you for life celebrations. Online at skeffingtons.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory. Caldwell Parish offers services that are unique to the individual while following the Catholic funeral rites. Caldwell Parish Funeral Home and Crematory, Des Moines' only Catholic-owned and operated funeral home. 
Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Catholic Charities of the Diocese of Des Moines, where empowering individuals and strengthening families have been the cornerstone of care for a century. Services for neighbors in need include a food pantry, professional counseling, emergency family shelter, and refugee resettlement. At Catholic Charities, lives are transformed and you can be part of the mission. To learn more about how to help Catholic Charities fulfill Christ's promise of help and hope, visit catholiccharitiesdm.org. Welcome back to Catholic Woman Now here in Iowa Catholic Radio, where our guest today is Kristen Terrio. She has written a companion guide to the Mother Cambrini movie. It's called The Mother Cambrini Companion. And we've been just talking a little bit with her about the um, letters that she's included that from Mother Cambrini and what um, the heart of Mother Cambrini um, as these letters were written to her, her fellow sisters. So um, as we start the segment here, Kristen. I know you've seen the movie, and I know you've um, written, read all these letters of Mother Cambrini. Is there something that was inspiring to you that um, really jumped out at you or just kind of took you by surprise from learning more who Mother Cambrini was and coming closer to her? Yes, I think one thing that really stands out in her letters that you don't so much get from watching the movie is her zeal for souls. So much of her work was this humanitarian work of relieving the physical and human suffering of those she came into contact with, but ultimately she was seeking their eternal good. And so this is her purpose with establishing schools so that you could be pro- properly formed in the Catholic faith and have a strong development and formation to take with you into the rest of your life in order to run the race to the end and make it to heaven. And so she had this long-term vision where she wasn't just focused on, as the saying goes, like feeding, feeding a man for the day, but rather in helping to develop these orphans for their entire lives and to make sure that they keep the faith for their whole lives. So I thought that was really important and, and interesting how she was constantly seeking to convert not only those who were in her care, but everyone she came into contact with. So on the steamships, for example, she, again, would meet with the captain and many of these prominent Protestant passengers. And even then, she was, in in her own way, without being confrontational, she was trying to draw them close to the church. And she did have success with this. One Protestant lady on board said that she would look up um, uh, mother's... sisters who were in Rome and go and visit them and inquire about the faith. So she was very focused, obviously, on her own mission, but she saw the missionary vocation as something that never rested and something to be applied to everyone that she came in contact with. There's a little bit of a, a, a lesson there for us as the lady, I think, too, not to to get comfortable in, 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 in who we are in our faith and just to keep pressing in and mm-hmm. meeting people and, and striking up conversations and talking about our faith. I think that exactly. zeal for souls, obviously, is yeah. a characteristic of, of all saints, you know, and as you grow, draw closer to the Lord, that you just feel that intensity, that you just have that zeal for, for souls. Uh-huh. It's, it's seeing that person as Jesus sees them, you know, mm-hmm. that zeal that he has from this love for them and mercy for them. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Kristen, you've seen the movie, right? I have, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so was it breathtaking for you, or how, how, how would you describe it after you saw it? Now, knowing all this about Mother Cabrini before you went yes, in. Yes, I, so I saw the movie before I did any of this research, so okay. that was a, I, th- I think that was good because I was able to sort of have, have that in mind while I learned more about her life and then sort of reassess at the end, but I would definitely go see it again, so I'm very excited to see it on the big screen. But it was it was very visually breathtaking, first of all, and also just the storyline was really so perfect, and um, <clears throat> I think it portrayed her in a very positive light where it's very difficult to find Catholic movies, as we know, yes. or movies that are even friendly to the faith and not outright hostile. So you always go into these kind of (laughs) a little skeptical and worried about how the church will be portrayed and things like that. And another problem that we run into with Catholic movies sometimes is that 
either due to low budget or something, they can sometimes look just a little cheap. But that was not at all the case with this movie. It was so beautifully shot. And as someone who is a historian, ultimately, in my ultimate career, I was really impressed also with the period drama aspects of it. So the costuming was on point. The, the settings were all very good and very realistic for that period in New York. So it was something that was really at the level of... Um, these bigger budget, huge budget films in Hollywood, but obviously had at its core this very important Christian message. That's that's so good to hear because that's how it's going to draw people in, is the, yes. is the quality. Well, and the well, same man who directed Sound of Freedom, how do you, how do you say his name, Edward? Uh, Alejandro Monteverde. Alejandro, yeah, Monteverde. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. that, that will be a big draw because Sound of Freedom was so successful. Well, this is a completely different type of movie, too. But the art, the yeah, artistic the art, yes, was there. Yes. The cinematic art was there so as well, too. Um, Kristen, i got to ask you this question because there's been a lot of chatter on the Internet about the feminist, that she's you know, in a, in, a, in a habit and this kind of thing. And so there's this camp of people saying, like, this is like holding her up like she's the ultimate feminist. But however... Mm-hmm. Um, You didn't see that in this at all. You saw her as differently. Yeah, I I understand where people are coming from with that critique. And um, I know she, at at the end, there's, I won't spoil it, but there's a scene where she kind of speaks to how only a woman could could really do what she had done. And she has this, uh, really, because of the, the vocation of her as mother, of course, she had not only <clears throat> to preach the faith, but also to take care of those who were in her charge. So this really, the, the spiritual vocation of mother is something that obviously only women can do, just as we can only be the ones who are physical mothers. Right. And so I think it, it was really speaking to the importance of motherhood and how that power comes from God. And that's how God perfectly created women to be these spiritual leaders through their motherhood. So I really like that aspect of it. Um, but they'll twist think, it. People will twist yeah, that. Because being yeah, a mother is, is the ultimate ul- ultimate feminist is being a mother in, in well, some yeah, sense, exactly. you know? Well, and I think, too, from what I've read um, about it, too, as far as her femininity was so, it was very authentic. It was very holy. And and uh, contrary to what is believed, her obedience actually opened doors. Her obedience is what God honored um, to to you know to the Pope for some, instance Pope Leo the Thirteenth told her to go west and not east, just those little obediences you know that she served in the church. Um, it's honoring and it honored her womanly dignity as well as what I've read. Right and yeah, the theme of obedience is very important to her. Obviously, as someone who had a religious vocation, she wrote to her sisters quite frequently of the virtue of obedience, and this really comes through in how she speaks of the Pope in her letters because. In the movie, I can I cannot kind of understand like her interactions with the Pope are kind of not confrontational, but very businesslike and and almost like uh, she's challenging him in a bit in a way. Um, and of course, it ends positively even in the movie. But when she writes about the Pope, you just get this deeper level of her respect and admiration for him. And she writes of Leo the Thirteenth as this benevolent father who is taking care of his children in the missions and who um, she she views. She speaks to her sisters, and she views all of them as really these these children of the Pope, these agents who are extending this, this fatherly love through their motherhood to all of the children of these remote locales. So it was a very positive and, and truly Catholic relationship that was devoid of any of the uh, devoid of any inappropriate confrontation, mm-hmm. and um, really just defined by a mutual respect because obviously the Pope saw in her this great grace that God had given her. That is so beautiful. And we're, we are now um, at the end of the show, Kristen. I want to thank you so much for coming on and talking about Mother Cabrini and the Mother Cabrini Companion that you put together with her letters. It's a wonderful way for us to continue to get to know her and become more like friends with her in a sense. Too. And you can get that book through Sophia, Sophia Press, right? Sophia Institute. That's Press. right. Okay. Yes, it's okay. available at sophiainstitute.com, and I really hope you enjoy the book and the movie as well. Thank right. you. Well, thank you so much. Let's close thank with you. prayer. Okay. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. I'm just going to say a simple prayer. I just feel like Mother Comprini, we're just going to ask for your intercession to open our hearts to soul, to renew the zeal for souls in our own hearts, so we can go forth and is as your example and witness for the world. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Now go do impossible things with God. 
Today's Catholic Women. On The Voice for Catholic Women Now. Iowa Catholic Radio. Iowa.